Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're going to take a look at a parallel circuit, two resistors in parallel, which essentially form a current divider. How does that work? Well, we have a current leaving the voltage source, and here we get to this node, where it splits up into this direction and this direction. Here we have what we call I1, there we have I2 in the second resistor, and what, what's happening is the current from the source then gets divided into two separate currents, I1 and I2. We can control the amount of that current by controlling the size of these resistors. To figure out how that works, let's first find the total current in the circuit using Ohm's law. We know that I is equal to V over R. In this case, that would be R total. So we need to find R total in this parallel circuit. R total can be found by saying 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Or, since there's only two resistors, we can simplify that algebraically into R total is equal to the product of the two resistors divided by the sum of the two resistors. In this case, R1 is equal to 6, R2 is equal to 4, and this is 6 plus 4 or 24 divided by 10, which is equal to 2.4 ohms. So the total resistance of a parallel circuit is always less than the smallest resistance in the parallel circuit. Applying that here in Ohm's law, we can say I is equal to V, 20 volts, divided by uh, our total, which is 2.4 ohms. And with a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. 20 divided by 24 is equal to 0 0.833, 0 0.833 amps, which is the current leaving the voltage source. Now it splits up into these two branches. What we can say is that the current in the first branch, I1, is equal to the total current times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch. Notice we're trying to find the current in I1, so we take the resistance in the other branch, R2, and divided by the sum of the two resistors, R1 plus R2. In this case, that's equal to 0 0.833 amps times R2, which is 4, divided by R1 plus R2, which is 6 plus 4, which is 4 tenths. So times 0.4 equals 0 0.333 amps. That's the current in the first branch, I1. I2 can be found by taking the total current and multiplying times the ratio. Since we're now looking for I2, we multiply times the resistor in the other branch, R1, divided by the sum of the two branches, R1 plus R2. In this case, 0 0.833 amps times R1, which is 6, divided by 6 plus 4, that's 6 tenths, which is equal to 0 0.667 amps. Together, of course, oh, no, that's not correct. Let me try that again. Let me try it again. 0.833 times 6 divided by 10 equals, that would be 0 0.500 amps. That's better. Together, they should add up to 0.833 amps, 0.333, plus 0.5, indeed does add up to 0.833 amps. It makes sense when you think about it this way. The smallest resistor should have the largest amount of current. So the smaller you make R2, the greater the portion of current coming from the source. The larger the resistor, the smaller the amount of current. That's why we multiply times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch. If the other branch has a larger resistor, then we get more current in this branch. If the other resistor has a smaller resistor, then we get less current in our branch because more will go to the other branch. And that's why we, we write it like this. To find the current in any branch then, you simply take the total current coming to the branch, then multiply times the ratio of the resistance in the other branch divided by the sum of the two resistors. Here again, you multiply times the resistance in the other branch divided by the sum of the two resistors. That's what we call a current divider. 